So welcome back to the TDI project. So that is a 130 PD being converted into an ice retro Corrado. So next job up is to sort out the vacuum lines. So the vacuum lines normally sit at the back of the engine bay and pretty much look like a big jungle of spaghetti. Now, what I'm doing, slightly different, and probably goes against most of what people do for modification, I am keeping everything as it is. So why am I keeping everything as it is? Well, I need the functionality on the EGR valve. I want the shut-off valve to be there because the shut-off valve is really, really important. So one thing that's going to go against the grain is keeping the EGR valve. So I'm keeping the EGR valve for one main reason, is the amount of control that you've got within the map for the airflow meter. Most people actually delete that off, get more power, Yes, you get more power, but there's only one reason you get more power is that it's trying to equate for air that's being drawn through there. It's measuring the air mass meter, and if anyone's ever been geeky enough to actually go and have a look at measure volume box, you're looking at 200, sorry, 250 to 350 milligrams of air when the EGR is open, being drawn in, and when you block it off, it goes up to about 500. So of course you're always going to get an overfueling event. So your miles per gallon are actually going to go down when you block off that if it's not really well mapped. You've got to be able to equate for it on idle using twice as much air as it's expected. So so I won't say it's putting twice as much fuel in, but we'll just say for argument's sake, it's putting in twice as much fuel on idle. So why would you do that? So I can see why a lot of people do it. So there's your normal caboogle mess. And a lot of people just run the N75 valve, which is the one that looks after the turbo. And realistically, if you're running two lines, that makes it so much easier. And so, now, it's not gonna be a show queen, but I do want it neat and tidy. So I'm gonna tuck it behind that area up by the ECU. So I've started modifying it by the old Corrado. Stroke Mark II ECU bracket. I've actually welded parts of the plates, so luckily I have got a donor set which I've been able to just mess around with. And all I've got to do is tidy up these pipes. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to tidy up these pipes, tuck them behind there, and just have the three pipes running through. Pretty much because I like everything factory area. I'm going to keep the vacuum ball. So the vacuum ball is quite important because it just adds that extra little bit of of air into the system because there's only so much is going to be in the servo lines and that just adds to the system all right the main thing is is to label everything so that's going to sit in the engine bay that way in the ecu and that's going to come to the front of the engine so i've got my basic pipes on there n75 n18 and the other one, but well, they could be swapped around. I can never remember which way around they are. But that's basically the EGR, shut off, and the turbo one. So here's version one. Let's see if it actually works. I've got quite a few little bends and things left over, which I don't really want to cut any of those. I think some of them have been cut on my first little go, but since I've had the, the second donor one, I don't really want to use too many. So it's just as complex, a little bit more simplified, maybe, because the original one was all in a big row. So that's why it needed so many swing back bends and stuff on there. Which are all very handy if this doesn't work. So I've essentially simplified it, but still having all the pipes. So we've got the three control lines, we've got the one for the servo, and we've got the one for the accumulator all there. Now the other reason I want to keep it factory is the way that these lines come out. So we've got the there's the accumulator. 
which is that little sphere on the front and that one's off the server if you had one of those instances where it's actually running on its own engine oil or other substance and you're trying to turn the engine off the shut off valve is going to hook into the accumulator which of course you may be turning it on turn it off a few times so it's going to use the vacuum that's on the accumulator to shut it off and not via this one-way valve what would be the servo pressure because you'd want to keep as much servo pressure as possible in the system this is you know absolute failure but that's all a very important safety item so we're just going to see whether we can actually plumb this in in a way that it's going to work so we'll do that servo accumulator accumulator comes in there so that's got the EGR on it so let's plumb you into the EGR that's the let's see what we've got N75 that goes to the turbo that's the one that goes to the servo so we've got a servo line just here just again another long, just long piece all these things get shortened down or altered around as and when it doesn't work so N75 valve with the shut off valve let's keep that in there it's very ill fitting could really do with a smaller one of those really or put it on the other way around that vacuum line doesn't seem to be the right one but we could soon swap those around Ooh, bit of foam we need some of that foam and there so we've got the servo line servo vacuum everything's on so the only thing is to do is the connector i've lost the connector now here it is so i've already got extended the wiring left it up from where the ecu goes Let's see if it works the first test is always going to be the shut off valve so that's that one good sign and that bit works so I need to check the other bits and pieces so how am I going to do that I'm going to break out the diagnostic machine so let's go into engine ignition is already on we we'll have to change the VIN number I think so of course we've got a load of stored faults some of them are to do with the valves that have been open impossible signal cylinder okay I think that's when I've been cranking while it's been a really low voltage that can cause that to happen so let's just clear all those off message from airbag controller not too much of an issue it hasn't got airbags but that's one fault I wouldn't mind getting rid of so we're going to go measure value box start the vehicle go up to EGR duty cycle Just as it starts to warm up, yeah, it's dropped up ever so slightly. Can change. So let's just give it a blip. There's a bit of vacuum there. Seems to be vacuum line there. What I'll do. Uh, run one of the pipes that run straight from the actual engine servo to the nose always got a vacuum applied to it see if that alters so we can actually see that fault reading's gone down so I've had a good mess around, I've swapped over the N18 valve as it is now, so the N18 valve has been swapped over, so I've gone, from, gone through two EGR solenoids and the N75 which is the turbo one you can use as a tester, it's a very similar sort of thing, different colour, that's probably the only difference in the specs and none of them are working, so I think I might have a bit of an electrical issue. So let me delve a little bit deeper 
see what I come back with. This is going to be fun. Break out the multimeters. So I've had a little mess around. I can't actually find anything wrong. So I've gone through like little wire injects and all sorts, swapping solenoid valves over, and it's suddenly working for no apparent reason. And we've got 85% duty cycle, which is on. And that's how much it's drawing because it's if I take that off, you'd be looking at around 500 on idle. So that is how much air is being drawn through the airflow meter. The system's not like fully tight or fully built up. So it'll be interesting to see what that's like when I've fully finished. So let's have a look at where we are now. Quite hard to see. Go. Let's just get the reflection off it. So we can just about to see. Duty cycle's on. That looks right. That looks right. So if we just go to basic settings where it gets into like a self-check mode. That's warning you to say something's happening. So it's raising the engine speed all by itself. Now pay attention to this and that. So duty cycles dropped, so it's essentially closing, so it, yeah, closing the EGR, and the air mass goes up. So that air mass at the high figure would actually be what you would read if you blocked it off. Well, actually, it'd be more than that. So there we go. There's 500. So the air mass meter can only read up to 12,000. It's quite a useful measurement to have. I'm happy with that for now. So if we just go and check the actual shutoff valve. Well, that's another job finished. So I fitted the bracket back in there, engine ECU's behind there. Well, I've fitted all the actuators in, in the bracket, I've pulled out the rain cover, which I thought I had a full rain cover that went over the top, but I clearly don't. I must be thinking a Matty's 24 valve pull on. So I need to ask him, where did he get that from? Because I could probably do one, it'll be a lot more tidy, a lot more neater, and it'll hide some of these pipes. But for now, they're sat there, they're waterproofed, not going to get in so the vacuum lines are actually running to where they need to run to and I'm just going to fit a little where is it so that's fitted throughout the system on the vacuum lines just the right diameter it tidies them up and that is pretty much I'm just going to put them on here and there so we've got the three that run out so confirm that the EGR works by looking at the engine ECU we've confirmed this one turns off which is exactly what we expect when we turn off the ignition. And the turbo one, I've tried testing it through measure value blocks and it seems to fluctuate. I've actually felt the vacuum that's on there and watched the vacuum actuator move on the turbo. And it does move up and down. There doesn't seem to be a great deal of movement or change in the pressures. Now that could be a number of reasons. The turbo has been stood for quite a while. The sensor is in there but it's not brilliant it may not be just creating boost so that's nothing to really worry about just yet it might just need finishing off here and there which i've still got a lot to do so that might be some of my next tasks just finishing off the, the engine bay getting a few little bits built up which do you know what i might as well start doing now i've still got some of the wiring exposed i don't really want to take that up until i've got some miles on it because I need to start doing some troubleshooting, particularly with the air conditioning, if that doesn't work. The wiring's all situated. The eye's looking a lot more usable. There's one more job off the list. So if that's the sort of stuff that you like watching, think about subscribing, or go back and check some of the other videos. They're very comprehensive and very technical. On Go and have a look at some of the videos that I've also done. So there's an air conditioning, heater motor in there, air conditioning pipes sort of in there everything's all plumbed up so once I actually get this MOT'd hopefully I'll be able to get it either gassed up 
well actually nitrogen tested to make sure there's no leaks in the system just use nitrogen is the right way to do it there's no harmful gases leaking and it's a lot cheaper than trying to just get it regassed and hoping for the best if you've got a project on the go just let me know down in the comments below what exactly it is and if it's anything as like this 180 just a standard 16 valve 8 valve or even something with a carburetor that's fine i like carburetors and if you're not a subscriber consider subscribing but thanks very much for watching i'm going to get back to do some work and i'll see you in the next one ta -da. Thank you.